We just found evidence of liquid water on Mars, and in this video, I'm going to tell you more than you ever wanted to know about this discovery. So we've known for a while that Mars must have had liquid water at some point due to surface features like riverbeds. While I was visiting NASA, I actually met one of the scientists who first proposed that Mars had liquid water at some point, and he still seemed a little bit salty that people didn't believe him at first. NASA's InSight probe landed on Mars in 2018 and stopped operating in 2022, but we've still been going through the data that it collected for the last few years, including the naturally occurring sound waves from Mars quakes and meteorite impacts known as seismic data. The use of seismic data in space exploration is actually what I did my PhD on, so naturally I'm quite excited to read about these results. In this study, scientists found that there appears to be a substantial amount of liquid water in Mars at around 11.5 to 20 kilometers deep under the surface. If this is the case across all of Mars, we're talking about enough water to make an ocean around 1 to 2 kilometers deep. Now before Elon Musk or my old research team gets too excited about using this water to support life on Mars, Remember that 11 kilometers is really, really deep. Now the deepest well that we ever drilled on Earth was the Kola Superdeep Borehole, which got to 12 kilometers, but this was a seriously intensive undertaking. In fact, it was so hot at that depth that things started to get a little bit melty and their drilling equipment kept breaking. At around 12 kilometers, it was around 180 degrees Celsius, which was quite a bit hotter than they predicted. Russian scientists reportedly said that the rock down there started to act more like plastic than rock. Now, in fairness, Mars is actually quite a bit cooler at depth than on Earth. Heat flow on Earth's land surface is around 71 milliwatts per meter squared. In comparison, check out this map of heat flow on Mars. Most of it is around 22 milliwatts per meter squared. The temperature at depth on Mars is expected to increase by around 6 to 11 degrees Celsius per kilometer, depending on your location. So with a surface temperature of minus 53 degrees Celsius at equatorial regions, at a depth of 11 kilometers, we might expect 13 to 68 degrees Celsius. So if we somehow did manage to drill to that depth on Mars, at least we wouldn't have to worry about melting drill bits. But the other issue with drilling that deep is the amount of drilling string you'd need. The drill bit is the part of the drilling rig that does the, well, the drilling. But to connect that to the rig itself, you need drilling string, a series of hollow pipes attached together. At a depth of 12 kilometers, you'd need 12 kilometers of pipe. If you've never seen a drilling rig in operation, you might not appreciate the implications of this. Each part of the drill string is attached on individually, but if you need to change your drill bit, you have to take each part off individually to bring the bit back to the surface. That's 12 kilometers of pipe twice just to change the drill bit once. This is just not feasible on Mars anytime soon. I'm going to let this video play out for a little bit because I think everyone should be aware of what drilling actually entails. So back to Mars, you can probably start to see why we'll never get to the water at that depth. We'd somehow need a whole drilling rig operation, which would mean taking everything with us from Earth. Unless, someday in the far future, we can manufacture some of the components there on Mars. Mass is everything in space travel, and you want to travel as light as possible. That's the whole reason why we want to find water on Mars in the first place, so we don't have to bring as much of our own. Maybe we could find places where natural geological processes bring some of that water higher, like we see on Earth with springs. Keep in mind as well that they haven't actually directly observed the water, it's just that the observations are consistent with this model and it seems to be the most likely explanation. To fully understand this, I need to explain a problem in geophysics called the non-uniqueness problem. Now imagine you're doing a gravity survey, where you measure the tiny changes in the gravitational strength on Earth due to different densities of rock below the surface. Now you detect a spike in gravity. This could be due to a small, very dense section of rock under the surface, but it could also be due to a larger, mediumly dense section of rock. And it could also be due to a wider section of dense rock closer to the surface. Now with this one signal, there's no way to tell which of these three that it is. Eventually, if you really want to know what's going on down there, you've got to drill. One alternative to drilling deeper for liquid water on Mars would be to find ice water closer to the surface. Honeybee Robotics and some of my colleagues at UNSW 
were working on rover designs that could harvest ice at polar regions for a potential colony. So if the first human mission to Mars does use water found on site, or in situ, it won't be by drilling to 11 kilometers. Sometimes I like to think about what it would be like to be the first person to drink a glass of Mars water. <sighs> please consider subscribing if you want to see more interesting space and science stories, and please consider supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee if you want to support my science communication work. That's it, bye.